Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Twin Motion video. In this video, we're going to look at something kind of weird that you may not have heard of, that you might not have thought of, or something that just doesn't make any sense, and that's material speed. <laughs> when I first heard about that, I was like, what the heck is that? Material speed? As if it's moving or something? Well, <laughs> in fact, maybe. So, before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which that's why we're here, right? We want to learn something. Please, please, please demolish that like button. Helps me out a lot. Okay, so we are in a basic scene here. We've seen this before. It's nothing special, but we want to focus on material speed. And so, yes, it, it is actually uh, materials moving. And there's a number of places you can find speed. So we, we actually have, like, actual speed options here, which is how fast our camera moves, which actually has nothing to do with the type of speed we're talking about. So we're going to disregard that speed when it comes to the rest of this video because we're not talking about that speed at all. So uh, the next thing that we can look at uh, is actually materials themselves. So if I select this material, it's it's a twin motion material, nothing special here. Um, but when I come into weather, I can see my weather's on. That's not a big deal. Uh, that applies to wind, which actually applies to speed. I've, I've done a video on wind a long time ago, so check that out. It, it is just wind. Uh, but speed plays into the factor there as well. But we're specifically looking at material speed because materials have speed, <laughs> which is kind of weird. So where do you find that? Well, you'll find that within the scale and then their speed. And we can see that that arrow appears to be moving. And then I have a bunch of zeros, which tells me exactly that it's not moving. <laughs> And by default, thankfully, this is what we get with all of our materials. You know, looking at this asphalt, it is not moving. There's no movement there. There's no no value set here. But the second I move this above zero, we see it starts to move, like literally moving as if it's translating across the surface. And this is going to happen everywhere that it's applied. You know, then we have to start to ask ourselves, does this make sense? I mean, um... I'm going to say most of the time, no, uh, but I, but what I'm showing you here is that, you know, how you can do it. Well, you know, we can do it a number of ways. We can make it angle. You know, you want to make it angle, you have to uh, start to play with the different speeds. You, you can play with this, the angles that way. Well, uh, we'll get to how we can change the angle another way. But, you know, let, let's say <laughs> as an experiment, what I want to do is actually create a path and a vehicle path and I want to basically see what the speed is equivalent to like one mile an hour you know just just to, just to get an idea because it, you know, I'm, I'm interested uh, for myself but mainly for y'all to get an idea of what that might be and so you know obviously I have all these cars here and I'm gonna put the density down so we can just get kind of one car at a time but I want to put this at one mile an hour and, and you clearly they are just crawling and so let's come over here and I've tested this before and so my best indication my best thought is coming into speed if we change the y I mean you're, you're gonna have to experiment based on the x y where you are but my best guess is not five you can see how ridiculous that is but my best guess actually is that 0.15 to the speed is approximately one mile an hour now here's where we get into the rotation so I actually would think well put in negative 0.15 well there's no negatives with speed it's either it's speed on or off a level a value greater than zero or not so i'm gonna put that at 0.15 and so how do we deal with the rotation well you know i don't want to rotate the object or anything like that but i can come back to scale and then there's my rotation and i can just you know pick this out and you can you can see it it's obviously moving but we we know we need to just pick 180 degrees just all right so if I come in back to speed and I zoom into some of these wheels, we can get an idea that, you know, yeah, this is basically one mile an hour is 0.15. Now, I assume that's consistent across all the different materials. Um, it just kind of is what it is. Now, in a case like a road or, you know, building so like so materials on a building, grass, and I don't know, where would this become relevant? Well, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, it depends on what you're going for. If you're looking for a, a certain effect, maybe you have different materials going at a different speed in opposite directions. I don't. Do you maybe you want to make it look like the car is moving a lot faster than it is? Well, you can make the road move the other way. I don't know. Like these are all applications that I I can't think of quite right now. Uh, but there's one in particular <laughs> that I think makes 
perfect sense and and really really adds a lot to it um and this is just by chance that i thought of this so i'm gonna come into this blank room there's nothing here um, it's not so much in the materials but it's in the objects and if i go to home gym and then look at this there is a lovely treadmill if i can find the treadmill there it is and then we'll place our treadmill here um, angle it out to the lake and we can look at it right now so all these materials I can edit, which is really cool. I can pick all these, change the color, whatever. I don't really care about that, but I can do that. You know, if we want to make it Planet Fitness, I absolutely don't. Uh, but the key thing that we want to look at here, of course, is the material speed. And the only thing I care about physically moving all the time when it comes to a material would be the tread on the treadmill, like the actual <laughs> treadmill spinning. I can make that happen essentially. Um, so I can come in here, and so I've this is my rubber material for for the treadmill itself um, I can change the scale I can do anything like that but coming into the scale here I change my speed and let's it's gonna be X or Y but put this at 1 well that's the wrong direction so it's obviously not Y so let's say it's X well and that obviously isn't the right direction either so I might have to end up rotating this but first of all we want to slow this down a bit and actually it looks like that is the right direction if I look at it it sure is. And if I really zoom in on this, I can see that, you know, in fact, that treadmill is moving. You know, it, it is. I've got the speed here. Um, it's not particularly fast. Again, like I said, <laughs> 0.15 is approximately one mile an hour. I don't know if that's true, consistent. It looked to be true outside. Uh, but this tells me, if I even put this at 0.45, that that is three miles an hour, which uh, it looks fairly consistent, you know. I mean, yeah, it's a good go by. Uh, I don't know why you'd necessarily want to have a treadmill going or look like it's on and going without the person standing on that, but, you know, obviously we can fix that by putting a person on there, but, I mean, we have basically created a material that is moving, that it is the actual tread treadmill itself. You can see there it's moving. So I, we, we've done it. So for every, when it comes to everything else, I, I am almost failing to come up with a, a reason why you might want to add that now I am going to explore something in a future video that might uh, be another solution another reason why we might want to add speed to a material um, when it comes to rendering and animating but you know when it comes to just an active scene you know I'm just flying around my seat and I want to make it seem more lively I probably don't want to add speed to all these materials because the second I do that, it's going to look really weird. I mean, this how unnatural is it for this concrete to be moving? Well, it's very unnatural. Um, if I'm making some sort of a game or, or like some, I don't know, something like that, I, I could see why a material might want to move. I'm not sure. Uh, but, I mean, we have looked at material speed. That's what it does. You can end up impacting the rotation that way if you want to. Um, but really, I think that's going to do it for this video. We've We've looked at everything that we can as far as material speed itself because really there isn't a lot to it. It's just a matter of do you want it and then set the rotation, the speed itself and just kind of know that everywhere you have that material applied, it's going to be moving in that direction. It's going to it's gonna vary based on you know the different planes that it's sitting on. So kind of be aware of that because if you have a plane, different different planes, then the X and the Y might be different. And so you might have to manage your materials in a different way. If you want the speed of the material to look or appear different, they may have to be completely separate materials. So just be aware of that. So, you know, there are probably, maybe there are other cases where I could see where this could be used. And so if you know of one that I'm not thinking of, please let me know in the comments. I, I'm very curious. I, I want to know where you're using material speed and when you've applied it because, you know, I haven't applied it that much. <laughs> um, I've got a couple ideas of uh, other videos that I'll do that include material speed, but they're, they aren't really practical reasons why I'd want to use material speed. So let me know that in the comments below. So again, that will do it. If you happen to learn something about material speed, like you didn't know it existed, absolutely demolish that like button. really helps me out a lot. Okay, that'll do it. Well, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.